of the 40 series in covering the whole book of the book of Galatians. Now, sometimes it amazes me kung paano tayo umabot sa ganitong napakahabang panahon na pag-aaral natin ng book of Galatians. And I, I believe that if every one of us ay naging attentive dun sa 38 na series na pinreach dito sa ating church and today and the next week we can safely say that the MCBC brethren is able to establish a very strong foundation doctrinal foundation in regard to the grace that we so enjoy and the salvation that we so enjoy because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ Second to the last, next week is going to be the conclusion and pastor is the one who is going to conclude the 39 lessons that we have studied covering the whole book of the book of Galatians. As in typical closing letters, sa ating verses na binasa ngayong umaga ay ni really emphasize ni Paul ang malady, ang problema, ang spiritual problem na nagbigay ng confusion, ng mabigat na problema sa mga Christians sa church sa Galatia. Especially the Jewish Christians who uh, established a very strong foundation sa Judaism and then when they came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and then dumating ang mga false teachers, that was when the spiritual malady became a serious problem. Kaya't kailanganin ni Paul na siya mismo ang sumulat nito at sinabi niya sa ating scripture reading in bold letters. Now whether ito ay literally in bold or Paul was rather emphasizing ng letter na ito ay talagang pouring out from his heart because he really wanted the Christians of the church to be brought back to what they espouse, what they embrace when they learn about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's some malady, it's some problem, and a very serious, extremely dangerous. To the point, most likely, na mga Jewish Christians na yon ay natatangay because of the nice words, beautiful words, convincing speech of the false teachers. And then based on our scripture reading, nakita natin ang true intention of the false teachers. Gusto nila na ito ay kanila maging object ng boasting. Na ang mga Jewish Christians na ito ay naging O object ng kanilang pagtuturo at ito ay nagbabalikan at ito ay ang kanilang object ng boasting. As if saying to the Jewish leadership na look what I am doing. Yung nagiging trouble, ito ay nakikita ninyo na ito ay nagbabalikan because of my effort. Sa ating pag-aaral in the past, alam natin, based sa uh, mga preaching na ating narinig during the weeks of introduction, na mga false teachers na ito ay very fancy, devilish, and self-centered sa kanilang teachings at sa kanilang interest. Sapagkat mayroon silang wrong notion ng katotohanan about God and serving God. Iisa lamang ang kadalang interest, boasting of the flesh, the self-centeredness of these false teachers. So good works, yun ang ating natutunan sa ating introductory uh, weeks dito sa book of Galatians. Focusing on the importance of good works, confusing the people, saying in a simple formula, faith in Christ ay hindi enough. 
kailangan idagdag ninyo ang good works. Huwag ninyong kalimutan ang Jewish heritage ninyo. Sa mahabang panahon, kayo ay naging faithful sa inyong religion na Judaism. And then all of a sudden, paniniwalaan nyo itong si Paul, paniniwalaan nyo ang ibang apostles na nagsasabi sa inyo na kalimutan ninyo ang law, huwag ninyong bigyan ng weight ang circumcision, huwag ninyong bigyan ng weight ang mga sinasabi sa Mosaic law, and then sasabihin sa inyo, faith in Christ alone ay enough. Huwag niyong bigyan ng matinding atensyon ang itinuturo sa inyo ng mga apostles. That is the simplest way of describing kung ano ang ginagawa ng mga false teachers na ito. So as a matter of review, para sa pre-conclusion week natin, ay ating balikan ang mga bagay na ginamit ni Paul, itinuro ni Paul sa mga Jewish Christians na yon sa Galatia upang sila ay maibalik dun sa sinasabi ni Paul na inyong excitement ng tanggapin ninyo ang gospel ni Jesus Christ. So let me share to you those points na in-emphasize ni Paul. Ang sabi ni Paul, kung sino daw ang magdagdag, magbawas, magdistort, mag-introduce ng bagong gospel outside of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, sabi ni Paul, that false teacher is a curse. Sa object ng cursing ng ating Panginoon. And sabi rin ni Paul, ang promise ni God na ibinigay kay Abraham ay isang promise. At ito ay promise na covered ng oath. So ay ang oath na ibinigay sa kanila ng Panginoon. At ang promise na ito, sinasabi niya, ay hindi pwedeng mabago. Ang promise na ito ay hindi pwedeng matabunan just because lumabas ang Moses law. Ang law ni God na ibinigay kay Moses. 430 years after na ang promise ni God kay Abraham na siya ay magiging father of many nations ay kinonfirm kay Jacob. Of course, Isaac and then Jacob. Then 430 years after that confirmation, ay lumabas yung law. And then, sabi ni Paul, hindi po pwede na matabunan ng law ang promise ni God. Sapagat ang nangyayari ay ang mga Judaizers, ang mga Jewish people, ay dumating na doon sa point that they have forgotten about the promise that God gave to Abraham. And what to them was more material was the law. So ang buhay nila ay nakafocus na doon sa law. Good works. Good works. But then Paul reminds them na hindi nyo kayang sundin lahat yung law. Sabi niya, the law is merely a teacher, a tutor. Reminding every one of us, or rather, rather, reminding every one of you, now with the law, habang naikukumpir nyo ang inyong buhay na sinasabi nyo ang aking buhay o imiikot doon sa pagsunod sa batas, habang aking nalalaman ang nilalaman ng batas, then nakikita ko ang aking sarili. How dirty am I because I am unable to observe all the laws. Sabi niya ito ay isang Tutor. And then, sabi ni Paul, ang lahat ng nananampalataya kay Jesus Christ ay ang tunay na heirs doon sa promise na yan. At ang lahat ng nananampalataya sa Panginoon ay ang tunay na seeds ni Abraham. And then, another reminder by Paul, ito ang dahilan upang kayo ay ma-accept ng Panginoon upang ang bawat isa sa inyo ay bigyan ng right ng Panginoon na tawagin siya na kanilang Father. As nabi ni Paul, every believer in Jesus Christ has been given the absolute permanent right to call God Abba, Father. And then, sinabi rin ni Paul, kung sino talaga ang may faith sa Panginoon, ito ang tunay 
na Israel. Now, it should not be surprising na sa mahabang panahon na iginugol ni Paul sa kanya mission, sa, sa missionary work niya, ang nakikita lang natin ay mga bagay na inilahad ni Paul upang makonvince ang mga uh, Christian sa Galatia na mali ang naririnig ninyo sa mga false teachers na ito at balikan ninyo ang inyong unang narinig sa akin. Now, looking at the book of Galatia, it, it, it is really one of the most difficult books in the scriptures sapagkat how can you understand these points in enumerate ni Paul if you do not understand the Old Testament scriptures from where naka-anchor itong mga points na ginamit ni Paul to convince yung mga Christians doon na mali ang itinuturo ng mga false teachers. Then, iisip ko sa sarili ko, while pouring over these things during the introductory weeks natin, laging pumapasok sa isip ko, hindi surprising if many times na si Paul ay nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga Christians dito sa Galatia, probably not even personally, kundi through emissaries na kanyang pinapadala, or probably there were moments na siya ay nakakapag-usap to some of them. Hindi ako magtataka kung paano na explained or rather, ini-explain pa further ni Paul sa mga Galatians na ito ang other beautiful things from the Old Testament scriptures na nagpo-point doon sa katotohanan ng grace under the new covenant. There are seven feasts in Judaism. Kaya hindi ako nagtataka, magtataka kung mga bagay na ito ay nagamit din ni Paolo upang lalo maliwanagan ng mga na-confuse na Kristiyano sa Galatia ang sufficiency ng cross ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Naindyan yung feast of the Passover. Naindyan yung feast of the unleavened bread. Feast of the first fruits, feast of the Pentecost, feast of the trumpet, feast of the atonement, and feast of the tabernacles. All pointing to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. All pointing to the cross. All pointing to God. Dahil sa lalim ng Book of Galatians, kaya naiisip ko na most likely na pagdaanan pa rin or pati ang pag-explain kung ano ang relevance ng mga feast na ito doon sa sacrificial death ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. So given this spectacular, beautiful backdrop na ginamit ni Paolo, upang maunawaan ng mga Galatian Christians ang katotohanan and sufficiency of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it's Jesus Christ alone, that it is faith alone, grace alone, and that it's only through the possession of the Holy Spirit that one can really walk on the light of God. That it is only through the possession of the Holy Spirit that one can really experience and show to the world the collective fruit of the Holy Ghost. Oh, we spent so many weeks studying the fruit. The collective fruit and the sub-fruits. Nine of them. Na sinasabi sa atin ni Paolo na ito ang dapat magmanifest sa buhay ng isang tunay na Kristiyano sapagkat This is what being with God is really about. These are the reasons for Christians' qualification of the word boasting na ginamit ni Paolo sa ating scripture reading. In verse 14, sabi niya, 
Galatians chapter 6. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Now, using these points, Paul is exposing the false teachers in regard to their pride, in regard to their cowardice, in regard to their hypocrisy. It's a surprise. You know, in the book of Acts, chapter 4 and 5, Very interesting um, um, stories uh, contained those uh, two chapters there on the book of Acts. In chapter 3, ay naandun yung story na si Peter, ang mga tao sa Jerusalem and the surrounding cities in Jerusalem, ay masyado nagmamarvel because of the miracles that nangyayari in the landscape because of the apostles. So many of them ay nai-excite na ma-marvel sapagkat nakikita nila sa kanilang mga mata, naririnig nila from, from accounts ng mga witnesses kung ano ang nangyayari in that landscape. The miracles that were happening out of the apostles na nag-express ng kanilang faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in chapter 4, may situation doon na ito ay narinig na ng Jerusalem leadership. The top officials of Judaism, Ananias himself, the high priest, the Sadducees, the Jewish leaders, and probably the Sanhedrin. So, pinatawag nila si Peter and the other apostles at kinu-question nila, bakit ganito ang nangyayari? Sapagkat nalaman nila ang isang miracle na nangyayari na isang lame man for 40 years since Bert, siya ay lame, paralytic. And then ito ay nakatayo because of Peter. So kinu-question, tinatanong. But Peter was very bold. Hindi matanggap ng mga Jewish leaders na ito because of pride. Hindi nila matanggap ang katotohanan ng miracles na nangyayari sa landscape in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this was qualified by Peter because people were marveling at kailangan i-correct ni Peter and the apostles na mga bagay nakikita ninyo na nangyayaring miracle sa paligid natin, huwag kayong mawala sa katotohanan. Ito ay nangyayari because of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ito ang kanilang explanation na ibinahagi dun sa, Jude, ju, sa leaders ng Judaism. Wala silang makita ng bagay na masama sa ginagawa ni Peter, pero natouch ang kanilang pride, kaya kailangan tawagin nila ang mga ito. And then in chapter 4, ay ipinakulong nila ang mga apostles. And then tinawag muli, si Peter ay nanalita ulit, very bold. At ibinihagi niya ulit ang katotohanan about the Lord Jesus Christ. Masyadong natouch ang pride ng mga Jewish leaders and the same way the false teacher's pride ay masyadong natouch at hindi nila mate na natcha-challenge ang Judaism. Now, natouch din ang kanilang hypocrisy. In Matthew 23 verse, uh, if, if you will please open with me, your Bibles in the book of Matthew. Let's see what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say about the Pharisees. Look at this. Matthew 23. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. 
Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works. For they say and do not do. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Hypocrisy. So, what should be the Christian's outlook in regard to what Paul is sharing with us from the scripture reading that we just read? Ano ang ating boasting? Boasting, our boasting should be on the cross, sinasabi ni Paul, and then sinasabi niya, a Christian has died to the world. And then third, we are awaiting what is going to happen to us being new creation in Christ. We often hear this subject about boasting. As in the ancient time, ito ay real na, and people today, this is a still a malady. People today are still of the belief that what possessions they have, what status they care about, and what level of intelligence they probably possess, proudly possess, combined are all it takes to be guaranteed entrance to God's abode. Maraming tao pa rin ang naniniwala na kaya niyang isave ang sarili niya, naniniwala sa Diyos, but along the way, I tinitingnan niya ang sarili niya na may kakayanan upang masabi niya na ako ay safe. With my good works, with my possessions in life, sa status ko sa community, sa kabuhayan ko, ito ay mga bagay na nagbibigay sa akin ng proof na ako ay maayos ang aking pagkatao, na ako ay may karapatan na masagot ko ang katanungan Kung ako ba ay kaaya-aya sa paningin ng Panginoon or ako ba ay hindi kaaya-aya sa paningin ng Panginoon. It is a trap that many people are finding themselves. Talagang mabigat ang kamalian ng katuroan na ang paraan upang tayo ay maligtas ay sa pamamagitan ng sarili nating kakayanan. Sarili nating effort or good works. And sa ating pag-aaral in the past, narinig natin, there are many Christian churches. Many churches are falling into this trap. Imagine this, 2,000 years after na ito ay sinulat ni Paul, na ang Bible ay available sa atin, and all that it takes is humility in absorbing what the Word of God is saying about salvation. And yet, in the 21st century, when so many materials are available in the internet, explaining what is grace, what is salvation, why is it that good works cannot save you? Why is it that your power, why is it that your riches, why is it that your possessions will not give you the guarantee of being saved when you die? That you are going to see God. And yet many people are still walking along the dangerous path. My brethren, false teachers are still well and alive and are everywhere, even to this day. Ang boasting nila ay hindi ang cross ng ating Panginoon, kundi ang kanilang sariling kakayanan. 
what Paul is telling us is that whenever we make boasting, we only make boasting in one thing, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi nga ng ating Panginoon, apart from me, you can do nothing. So plain. There is no other way of explaining it in the clearest way as the Lord Jesus Christ did. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from the cross, you cannot save yourself. Without faith in Christ, one cannot be saved. Is that difficult to understand? Well, to the world, it is. It's because of the pride. It's because of the absence of humility. It's because... of the rejection na kanilang ginagawa na hindi nila matanggap ang itinuturo na forget about traditions, forget about the things that you learned since childhood and just focus your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the situation today is as true as the situation in the ancient time when the Lord Jesus Christ confronted the Pharisees. At sinabi ng Panginoon Heso Kristo, as recorded in the Gospel, in the, uh, chapter 7 of the book of Mark, nang sabihin ng Panginoon, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God just to hold on to your tradition. Ganun din sa ating kapaligiran, di, kapaligiran, di ba? Lahat tayo, we were there. There was a time in our lives that it was very difficult for us to accept the biblical truth na faith alone in Christ. Hindi natin mabitawan ng ating tradition. Ang katawiran natin lahat, dito ako lumaki sa paniniwalang ito, sa tradition na ito, hindi madali na bitawan ito. At then sasabihin ko, tatanggapin ko ang iyong sinasabi na faith in Christ alone. Lahat tayo dumaan doon, kaya nauunawaan natin yan. That is what the world is boasting about. The world is not boasting on the cross. It is not the object of the world's boasting. Then sabi ni Paul, I, have, I am dead to the world and I to the world. The world is dead to me and I to the world. Simply put, ang ibig sabihin, the world has nothing to do with me anymore. Lahat ng mga bagay na aking nagawa in the past, ang tingin ko ay napakabuti, lahat yun ay kinukonsider ko na nadang or duminang hayop. Wala akong mabuting nagawa, samantalang ang pag-iisip ko noon, I was doing great things for my God. And then sabi ni Paul, the world has nothing to do with me anymore. I am not part of this world because I believe in what the Lord Jesus Christ prayed about. As recorded in John chapter 17. Now we are not part of this world. Na tayo ay iisa sa Panginoon. Siya ay nasa atin, tayo ay nasa Kanya, tayo ay hindi citizens of this world. Kaya ganun ang attitude ni Paul. Ako ay mabubuhay in the service of my God. Ako ay na-crucify na. The rest of the years na aking ipamumuhay, ito ay gagamitin ko to serve my God because I boast of the cross of my Lord and my Savior. Hindi ako nagbabo sa sarili kong kakayanan sapagkat nakita ko na na hindi ko kayang iligtas ang aking sarili. Walang kabutihan akong nagawa na kaya kong hanguin ang aking buhay sa dumi at ako ay masabi ko na kaya kong iligtas ang aking sarili. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, sabi ni Paul, For who makes you 
differ from another. And what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you did indeed receive it, who do you boast as if you had not received it? In other words, there is nothing that we should boast about. Nothing. If you are proud that you are a successful professional, if you are so proud because you are rich, because of so many things that tinitingnan mo na ganito ang aking pagkatao, we must always not forget. We must not forget ang sinasabi ito sa atin sa scripture na as a believer, ang ating pag-iisip, sabi ni Paul sa mga taga-Colossians, ay dapat sa heaven. And then remember the words of Job. Tayo ay dinala ng Panginoon sa mundong ito na walang bagay na pag-aari. And we will all die leaving everything here on earth. Kaya ganito na lang ang sinasabi ni Paul na ang aking boasting ay isang bagay lamang ang object, ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, the cross. And I have died to the world and the world to me. In 1 John chapter 2, So I familiar sa ating mga verses. First John chapter 2, 15 to 17. Ito ang maging attitude natin sa world na in-express ni Paul na kanyang attitude towards the world. Sabi ni John, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. There is no further interpretation required out of these verses. What John is saying is what Paul is saying. We have been crucified with the world and the world to us. Meaning to say, the world has nothing to do with us anymore. Kaya sinabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Imitate me as I have imitated the Lord Jesus Christ. What a bold statement from Paul. Kaya niyang sabihin yun. Sapagkat alam ni Paul na totoo ang kanyang sinasabi. The world has nothing to do with me anymore. Kaya sinasabi niya, imitate me as I have imitated my Lord Jesus Christ. Beautiful. Beautiful. We are looking forward to the day when finally we will find a rest in heaven as new creations in Christ. Sabi ni Paul, tayo ang tunay na heirs. Tayo ang tunay na seeds ni Abraham because of the cross. Because of the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. And it is certain that we will spend the rest of eternity in the presence of God as new creation. So the challenge for us today as I conclude is that the outlook that every one of us must espouse, must embrace, and must practice is an outlook that should show to the world and to the church na tayo ay tunay na bagong creation. Go back and try to refresh the messages that we have heard about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Because they are 
the messages that we need if we want that outlook to be real in our lives as new creatures in Christ. Go back to those lessons. Refresh ourselves. They are bountiful in regard to wisdom, in regard to the guide that we need for us to really make a meaningful outlook out of our lives as new creatures in Christ. And then as we go down today, after the service, try to look again at the covenant of the church, the nine points, because they are good reminders to us that we are indeed individuals who are committed in serving God if we are really Christians. And the best way for us to show that we are indeed committed is by way of internalizing the nine covenants and putting to practice those nine points. It hurts us whenever Pastor and I get worried. We are hurt whenever we hear stories about members of the church or people in the church who are still unable to put to practice those nine points. When pastor delivered a message about the burden bearers, all of us should be burden bearers rather than tayo ang maging burden in church. A burden bearer is different from the one who is a burden in the church. Bilang mga Kristiyano na ibinigay na sa atin ni Paul kung ano dapat ang attitude sa ating service sa Panginoon. Then, hindi tayo dapat maging burden sa ating fellowship. It's not late. As you look at those nine covenants, it's not late. Pag-isipan natin lahat, are there areas in my life na ako ay nagiging pabigat sa church? O ako ay hindi nagiging source of encouragement sa church. It's not late. If you think that you are becoming a burden in the church, then just share Paul's outlook in life. Because he saw the truth. He found the truth as you have found the truth. May the good Lord bless us today. And may these things that we heard today sink into our hearts and into our minds for God's glory. Amen.